won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need. Oh, 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 oh. this ain't love, it's clear to see. But darling, stay. Songwriting has always been more than like just songwriting to me. It's been really like healing for me because it's like in a way of expression, in a way that I can put my thoughts into words and stuff when I'm not able to say it. My mom noticed that I could sing when I sang to Barney and she noticed that it wasn't like completely awful, you know? And so she, I, I started um, voice lessons when I was six because my mom took me because she didn't want me like screaming for the rest of my life and not know how to like sing properly. Um, so I started singing at the Grapevine Opry when I was nine with a live band, and I think that's where I got all my stage experience. Um, and so I think learning and meeting all those musicians, because um, those are some of the best musicians in the DFW area, um, that I finally was like, okay, maybe like this could like be my thing, I could actually do this. Like it wasn't just like something I did on the weekends anymore. Like that's all I wanted to do. After the Opry, I kind of went on to doing more acoustic things, more like, more things with just like my name. Like it wasn't like Abby Cohn at the Great Mind Opry, it was just like an Abby Cohn show or like stuff like that. It's supposed to be love, the you I started going to Nashville when I was 12 and I think I just wanted like that's always been like the country music capital or like you have to go to Nashville if you want to be a country singer you know and um, I think I just told my mom I was like mom I want to go to Nashville and so we took our first trip when we were 12 or when I was 12 and we just kind of did like the basic touristy things but then we started meeting people just it's so crazy how many people you just meet and like run into and they have something to do with the industry like it's just it's very small like it's a city but it feels like a town like I feel so at home in Tennessee because it's like you walk down the street and you see people like that like you'll literally see people just with a guitar on their back like walking down the street like it sounds so cheesy but that's exactly how it is and that's what I realized when I started like like getting more involved in that is I'm like I finally fit in somewhere it's like I don't have to feel weird about it anymore well, just because that's like people that do the same thing as I do especially being from Argyle like it's so small and like you play football or you do something and that's like the normal thing like I didn't I didn't do a normal thing so it's like I honestly don't know how I even went up to freshman year because I was just drowning in makeup work you know so I was I finally just told my mom I was like what would you think of homeschool that year from when I went to freshman out of freshman year into online school was like the hardest I've, like that that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do just because there were so many changes like I was so isolated, like I felt so isolated. I'll go through periods of time where I just get really depressed and I don't, like it's a weird thing for me to talk about. I don't like to talk about it a lot, but like I just get so down and I'm like, I don't understand because I have so many things to be happy about. Like I get to go to Nashville once a month. Like I get to do all of these things, but I think it's made me realize how much people take it for granted. Like I still go to the football games and stuff like when I can, but that just makes it kind of harder because I see all these people like in the student section and like, I just see people living it and like I don't get that. And I've lost friends because of it and it's been it's been like a sacrifice. Like if I didn't want it as bad as I do and want my career and want and like as passionate about music as I am, I would have been back in public school like six months before after I got out, you know. I think I've always been kind of different in that way. Like I I think this is what I want, this is what I want to do, and I can't have both and I understand that now, but that's been the hardest thing to understand. My first album, the Abby album, I thought like what better to say than like Abby, this is who I am as a songwriter. But a lot of that, I wrote that whole album over the time I transitioned into homeschool. I went through a lot of stuff, so the album's pretty sad, like it's a depressing album, which is fine. Like uh, that, I want I want to be real to people and people who listen to my music. Like I want people to be able to relate to it on a personal level. Like what an honor for someone to like take a song that I wrote and like my experience and like have the privilege of being related to their life. 
biggest turning point in my career is kind of, it's been in Texas when I sang with Josh Abbott. You know, I met him before, like as a fan, like in a meet and greet thing, which was like, that's so cool to like actually know him now. But like, I went to a radio show, Justin Frizzell at 95.9 has a Texas Red Dirt Rose and it's his live Sunday radio show. And I went to just watch or whatever. And I went up to, uh, Justin for the show and just said hey or whatever and I was totally kidding and I was like hey I know all the words oh tonight if you want to like if I want to do it with Josh or anything I was literally kidding and he ended up pulling me up there lady by the name of Abby Cohn. and she is here today and she asked I would love to sing oh tonight with Josh it gave people like an opportunity to actually know who I was so like me and Josh never had like a formal introduction like we sang together and then we met I'm gonna set aside my pride. And then finally up until like just writing really working hard at it until last couple months ago I finally signed my first publishing deal. Like that was a huge thing for me because like it's like it's cool when someone is like yeah I love your voice like you're a really cool artist but then it's like when someone loves your songwriting just because that's such a special thing to you and it's like your words that's the coolest thing. And a girl just recently put this ain't your heartbreak on hold to cut and possibly and she's working with like George Strait's producer and stuff. It's never gonna be about money or anything materialistic like that. It's like I know everyone's situation is not going to be my exact situation that I had in that song, but it's like my hope is that it can be specific enough for them, for it to help them in some way and for it to relate to them. Like whether it's like a heartbreak song, whether it can help them get through that or whether it's like a really fun song and it makes them feel like they want to roll down the windows and like laugh, you know, it's like I, my main goal is just that it relates to someone. So just kind of keep doing the same thing I'm doing and see where it takes me.